Hello fellow wanderers, I'm Endry, and thank you for joining me as we wander through some more Sunless Sea. We're in Varchus, the mirrored city, where the light was always the law. The walled city of Varchus is a tangle of green vines and luminescent fungal flowers, slow blooming around moldering stone. A quincunx of car-stepped towers rise over the walls and pour burning white light into the bleak sky. A rough shadowed path leads from the docks to the mirrored gates of Varchus, Two towering car stone lamps throw their light on the angled mirrors, and a blue cloaked guard stands in the reflected pool of light. The city is a beacon against the tree hushed, sprawling darkness of the Elder Continent, and the far distance a vast mountain glimmer glimmers. Choke on the smell. It's overpowering sweet and comes with a fungus growing wild all over the city's stones. The flowers have white, waxy leaves which leave powdery traces on your fingers. The light coming from the city has the same camphorous quality, and the smell. And the smell. Perfume worn too many days on the body. Unread books left to turn into ink-stained pulp. A garden drowned and rotting in still water. The Zaylers wave you open. They're sitting on some upturned crates on the docks, playing a game with mere chips and stylized snakes made of bone. You're not thinking of going in there. The Zaylers gawk at you with unconcealed horror. They take turns telling you gruesome stories of arches, which they no doubt invented whole cloth. Some are convinced that the Varchasi render sailors into tallow to light their city. Others say they steal shadows and sell them to their masters. All of them are convinced that the, they blind any strangers who dare gaze too long upon the city's streets. We're just waiting to be paid, and then we're off, one of the sailors says, nervously fingering a mirror chip. I've only got one eye left, and I'd like to keep it. Ask a guard a few questions. Never a bad idea to gather a little intelligence before heading into unknown waters, or cities, as the case may be. The blue cloak guard only acknowledges your existence when you step out of the darkness of the path and into the light from the lamps. The guard stands in a middle pool of light, looking warily at the darkness beyond you. Up close, the guard's blue cloak is threadbare and mossy along the hem. A pattern of embroidered suns run along the collar, but the gold thread is dull. The coal around her eyes is smudged. Well, Tomas, she asks, are you going to ask your questions, or are you just going to stare? Her tone is brusque, but her expression is curiously eager. You do not think Varchus receives many visitors. Your name is not Samas, you po correct her politely. <laughs> the guard looks scandalized and tries to stop her, her ears. All those who are not Varch Varchasi are Tamas. You have been touched by darkness and has taken your name. She fixes you with an admonishing look and adds, It's very ill-mannered to pretend you still have one. You begin to see, a little, why Varch Varchas is not often visited. It looks like you have to get used to be calling Tamas if you wish to enter. Ask about the light. It all seems a bit wasteful, possibly even ostentatious. We must always walk in Maher's light, so we burn our lamps night and day to banish darkness from the mirrored city, she tells you proudly. If we let darkness corrupt us, we would not be Varchasi any longer, but Tomas, like you. You wonder, is that so terrible a fate? Her mocking laugh answers you even before her words do. Yes, it would be terrible indeed, Tomas, and before you ask, she adds, No, I do not have any desire to leave Varchas. The rest of Neath has fallen from Maher's grace, and I have no wish to join them. Ask about her. Does she like her job? Does anyone? It's a great honor to guard the mirrored gates. She, she snaps defensively and gestures, gestures at the edge of the pool of light illuminating her post. It's very dangerous. Even a small stumble and I could fall into the dark. Her voice goes thready. To be banished from Maher's grace, I would lose my name. That is why they only send the bravest outside the walls. Ask about the city's customs. Best to know about them. Best to know before you flout them. Use your plan escape route that way. Don't touch the mirrors. Don't even look into the mirrors, she says, her voice hard, and try very hard not to dream. You're expecting along the lines of don't murder anyone or only wear red at special occasions? Still, you nod and smile. You're satisfied, or perhaps the guard's voice is beginning to grate a little. She looks a little disappointed, but tries not to engage you further. Let's compile a port report. Tone down the details of the light and its brilliance. You don't want to inspire envy in the Admiralty staff. What else were the gates for, if not to go through? She makes a mark at a ledger before ringing a brass bell. The mirrors of the gates rearrange to give you space to pass, but never once allow Shadow to touch the guard. Our ways are not yours, Tomas. Remember that, and walk in the light of me here. Oh, it's time for reading. Your eyes are blinded by the brilliance of the light. The verdant rot is, smell is even thicker. The heat of so much flame and reflected light presses oppressively against your skin. Your head pounds. It's a few minutes before your eyes adjust and you can look around. Brass lamps and gilded gauzes hang from every wall, and phosphorescent fungus grows moss-like on the doorways and ceilings. 
Clearly arranged mirrors catch every droplet of light, diffuse it till each cobblestone rampant of the city, and rampart of the city is drenched and blazing utterly without shadow. Who do you speak to? Dressed all in saffron, and a pair of thick fireproof gloves dangle from the silvery chain at her waist. I'm too important to play guide to you, Tomas, she tells you before you even open your mouth. I'm the keeper of the western principal mirror. She points up at the enormous multifaceted mirrors set atop each of the city's five towers. I'm only here because I'm looking for my idiot brother. He's probably busy pouring wine down some pretty dark-eyed boy's throat in a tavern. A matter of great urgency, you wonder? He's late for his lamp checks in the sacred district, her church, is her church reply. She hurries away. If the Ngahatri found out, he'd be lucky to end up a lake dredger. And we've now got the first tower sounded. You get five. The jewel turban youth, he is wicked at you. Is it a furtive wink or a flirtatious one? Only one way to find out. He looks utterly overjoyed to make your acquaintance. The bangles on his wrist flash as he presses his hands together in greeting. My friends and I would be honored if you would attend a small gathering with us, Tomas. We're eager to hear about the world outside Varchus' city walls. It seems an innocuous enough invitation, but then why does his gaze start around so anxiously as he tells you how to find his mansion in the eastern district? Let's talk to the white cloak guard. The, second, the sons of Rudy on his cloak are picked out with gold thread and the edges jeweled carnelian. Tomas, he presses his hands together in greeting, you give an, and then gives you an anguished look. You look terrible. Are you sick with, ter with a terrible outsider's disease? Or is that what your nose naturally looks like? Over your protestations, he gives you directions to the hospital. Oh, the medics are all butchers, to be sure, but they walk the light of Mihir, he adds breezily, then points out the guardhouse in the vague direction of the temple of Mihir, and the streets and the bars and caving houses. We don't want to get a reputation for being inhospitable. He laughs as he made a grand joke, and you laugh along weakly. Huh. Now, one fragment. Let's continue our explorations. Here's any glues of Eileen. You'll get used to the spell in time. Or reading. You walk a gallery, galleried courtyards, wreathed with vines and fungal blooms. Long, straight roadways crisscross the length and breadth of Varchus, the stone worn by wheels of carts and the treads of a thousand slippered feet. Lamplighters constantly check the fuel levels of the sconces and replace wicks. Firekeepers check coiled spring mechanisms that control the angle of mirrors. There is much to explore. Where will you go next? Let's start with the Mansion of the Jewel Turbaned Youth. He did invite us, after all. You're entirely certain what you're expecting from a Jewel Turbaned Youth invitation. Perhaps a candlelit dinner and a genteel seduction? It turns out to be an evening of card games and chilled wine with his rather eclectic collection of friends. As the wine is drunk and the cards are played, the gathering takes on a certain political tone. A raggedly dressed artisan begins complaining of the Agnahatri's Agnaha trade restrictions. A novice priest points out contradictions in Mihir's mantras. A stone cover questions whether his daughter should also have to follow in the same profession. Will you, the jewel turban youth, stared at you with licking lips, tell us a story? We have a 90% chance, we could say, it is practically a silly profession, invent a fanciful tale. We succeeded. We get a Syrian Enigma, which is really valuable. Oh, I'm glad to have that. <clears throat> your crew would have enjoyed this tale and probably added their own asides and embellishments. Still, you couldn't have hoped for a more appreciative audience. They grasp, moan, and shudder guiltily as your story comes to a climax. Afterwards, the jewel turbid youth takes you by the hand, his own is shaking, his skin is clammy. We are bidden from the trickery of storytelling in Varchus, he tells you hoarsely. I have never heard anything so sublime. So that gets us one of the uh, four things we need to do the pilgrimage, which we may or may not t get to this game. Let's go to the guardhouse, or actually, let's go to the Temple of Mihir. The sounds of the bells grow louder and more reverberant as you approach. The Temple Tower pierces through the city's heart, taller than the other four towers, which stand at each of the cardinal points. Around the temple sprawls the sacred district, divine-covered stone shrines, still ponds glowing with algae and flash-finned carp. Priests in white, their wrists heavy with metal chains. There are no mirrors in the Temple of Mihir. The rest of the city has to make do with mirrored light and reflection. But Mihir's most sacred space is filled with hundreds of lamps and lit candles of hard-packed phosphorescent fungus. I'm going to talk to the uh, Agnahatri. The Varchesi equivalent of the king or governor, he is overseeing rituals and gives you a slanted glance. 90% chance to succeed. And we did. You go to pay your respects and he paint and he is at pains to impress upon you that he is no despot or tyrant prince, but rather rules Varches with his council of sun seers and fire keepers. What do you think of Varches so far, Tomas? He asks, and you know better than to mutter anything but meaningless platitudes in response. 
He nods as though satisfied, but you catch him giving you a sharp, speculative look as you wander the temple. Seems you have aroused his interest. The fourth tower bell has sounded, and we gained a veil, which is kind of nice. Um, and there's not much we can do. We can listen to the mantras. That will reduce terror, but our terror is actually pretty good for now. It will not be for long. Let's check the guardhouse. Just follow the stream of white cloaks. A modest stone building with bas-relief lintels and wide, unshuttered windows, the stylized sun of Meher flutters from a silk flag above the portico. The scene of controlled chaos. You can see the white cloak guards bustling to and fro within, shouting companionably to each other while a stream of fungus carters, birches, and ordinary citizens petition them. We are going to train with the guards. 88% chance. We succeeded. I'm actually impressed. Oh, I guess our irons is pretty high. The sergeant does not object when you slip into line, but he doesn't treat you with any particular gentleness either. You practice hand-to-hand -hand combat for a few hours and end up on your back more often than not. They fight in an unfamiliar, light-footed style. A few of the more advanced recruits dueling, duel with curving, twin-bladed scimitars. Interesting, the sergeant grunts at the end of your session. You are bruised, possibly concussed, but quite satisfied with your morning. You think they might have learned something in return. So we get a pilgrimage point, and we get two iron. That's actually really good. At this point, we have to return to the city center, and we have to go to the inn. The light is en endless and merciless. Will you sleep? All visitors to Varchus are given one night's accommodation in the city's only inn. It's a handsome stone mansion arranged around a pleasantly cool courtyard. Frescoes of city life are painted on the walls. Given how few visitors Varchus hosts, you suspect the inn is more usually used by philandering locals. Evening falls, or does it? The town's five principal mirrors are mounted in on coiled spring mechanisms and alter their angles subtly to create the impression of evening. Across the city, firekeepers throw pinches of colored powder into lamps. The quality of light yellows to stop their brightness. The wine maze lamplighter. He is dressed in saffron robes and is indeed a pouring wine out of the throat of a very attractive dark-eyed boy. You could tell him his sister's looking for him, and we will. He starts up horror. He starts up in horror, spilling burgundy red wine everywhere. His young companion looks irritated. I'm late. He shouts, "Be here, forgive me." The uh, Agon Agonhotri is going to skin me alive. He pumps your head in gratitude. Thank you, Tomas. I won't forget this. Here. Take my arc jewels. We get three art outlandish artifacts. What well, was very simple. We can do the kitchens, 61%. We can do the courtyard, which is uh, 69%. We could sleep or we could don't sleep. We should do one of these two because there's no reason not to. Let's try the courtyard. Cushions are arrayed around a marble fountain in the middle. Musicians pluck their instruments under the shade of twisted yellow leaf trees. Their songs are curiously prosaic. The lyrics more like a biographical report than a poetic invention. Some of the Lake Dredger's waterlogged, lotus-rooted dirge, you sway to the slow, steady ballad of fungus collectors and join in the lamplighter's quick-footed dance, which mimics their evening rounds. The evening uh, finishes with the Song of Mihir, which is sung to the accompaniment of string instruments and drums and polished glass prisms, which split the white light into rainbows to counterpoint to the note. Three memories of a distant shore. Very nice. It doesn't seem like they're that useful, but uh, they could be. They, you could sell them and you can convert them. So getting all of these that you can is very nice. We lost two terror, gained five fragments, and it's time to sleep. We are going to sleep. We're not going to try and stay awake. One, because we have a 37% chance, and two, because I actually want to get this uh, uh, dream smoke of, uh, dreams of smoke. The bed is low and wide, draped in cotton sheets, stamped with vegetable dye patterns in muted greens and blues. We have gained ten terror, menace the dream of smoke. You fall into a into sleep easily despite the bright light but your dreams are full of whispering glittering smokes mere vapors that coil into reflection warping shapes you see your limbs bend your skin slough your eyes twist you wake with your heart pounding your nostrils are full of fungal rust smell of arches your body is as it always was but somehow it is not as comfy as it should be <clears throat> outside your time in varges is strictly rationed each morning at dawn the guard visits the inn to eject any tomas they find they are polite, but very definite. Return, the guard tells you, but not yet. With that, they usher you into the darkness beyond the walls. Uh, you blink, mirror dazzles from your eyes. It is cold out here. And that's it. We're done with Varches. So we're going to undock, we're going to turn off our light, and we're going to stop the ship. And we're going to wait here. It will take about a minute. And in this minute, I am going to take a drink. So pardon me. Mm. Ah, a lot of reading in this game it does bad things to my throat. 
Uh, but hopefully I'm still understandable. We gained another secret. Very nice. We really want this to bing, bing through because I want to pick up something here while we're visiting. No reason to put it off, really. Uh, Zaylor Rail calls. Miss Wonsley's really ship. Saw it looking up at us. 55% uh, chance. Let's risk it. We have a strange catch. Ooh. Ooh, we want to stop by the college with that. But for the moment, we gained one terror. You're now fearful. Your cheeks are wet. You'd think for a moment that's sweat, but the astero hits you like falling a slide tight. You're weeping. You double over inconsolable. Weep. Give yourself over to it. Ah, your crew watches the alarm as you collapse on the boards. Tears burst from your eyes. Your body is racked with sobs. It passes as suddenly it started. Your thoughts are stained with dark, unlikely grief. Yes, the terror train is starting, as it were. But that's all right. We'll probably buy a little bit of fuel and sail with the lights from here. Ah. Uh... Listen to your dreams. What will you learn? A dream. A mere fasted pillars rise around you like trees in a forest. More so because each glows with a shifting green light. The Z laughs at the base of the pillars. A voice from above cries out in seven languages. You understand each one. When is the face of Iram? It will be taken from us. Gain a memory distant shores and one terror. Fine. This has not changed. We will talk to the fungus carter. She stops at air. Her cart is piled high with fungal blooms and jars of algae painstakingly scraped from the surface of walls. She stops every few minutes to cough surreptitiously into her dyed cotton scarf and eyes you warily when you approach. I have to take the, this load all the way to the sacred district and the priests don't like it if I'm late. You inquire politely about her cough and she looks suddenly terrified. Near her look down on me, she mumbles, please don't say anything, I have a family to feed. With that, she grabs the handles of her cart and put, pulls away to run. In a few moments, you have lo lost sight of her within the crowded pathways. What an odd woman. We gain one terror, hail of terror, one terror, and the waves are flecked with light. Continue our explorations. We want to go to the temple first. And we want to go to the Dream of Smoke. They seem like something that the priests might understand if you had a mind to tell them. The Sun Priest lets you describe the dream with growing disquiet. Were you not taught to guard yourself when you sleep in a room full of mirrors, he asks, and then curses. Should priests curse at temples? I cannot believe the Tamas are so ignorant. You assure them that you are indeed quite ignorant and wait patiently for them to finish another more inventive round of cursing. There are dreadful powers in mirrors, it is, unhelp it is his unhelpful conclusion. It gives you a charm of bloody snakeskin and, scra and scraps of paper written in an angular, unfamiliar script and tells you to hang it upon the nearest mirror before you sleep. So we now have a mirror charm. Dream, gree, snakeskin, and, and scraps of close written paper. Very good. Now, our tear is actually a little higher than I would like it to be. So I am going to listen to the mantras. In Varchus, the stun still shines. Call the sun priest in a way of invocation. The assembled temporal goers raise their voice in a well worn fly. In Varchus, the sun still shines. This loses five terror. It gains a memory distant shore. There's no risk. Sun priest pitches his, her voice so it echoes off the fire warm stones of the temple and reverberates through the tower. Mirhur looked away from us and Varchus fell, she intones. Now we light our city like a beacon so Mihir might find us once more. Uh, all right, we're going to leave here. And I think all we really have left to do is the hospital, and we are going to fail miserably. Are you feeling a little fevered, or do you hope to learn medical secrets? Perhaps you just enjoy the moans and flushed faces of the sick and suffering. Turtle Hospital is a long, gallery building divided into a series of cur curtain wards, each with their own light sources and mirror series. Dower face stirs glass at you expectantly. Which ward are you to visit? If we had... Uh, the brisk kip hater, the haunted doctor, and it progressed their story, we'd be able to use them. We could also make a high-risk challenge, 18% chance, uh, but this would get us the dour-faced approval. Uh, I'm going to click it and see what happens when we fail. You gain one terror. Apparently they do things differently in Varchus, or maybe your anatomy is a little rusty. Do you make a few fumbling attempts to put in a catheter? Dour-faced nurse declares you a menace and banishes you from the ward. All right, we're going to return to the city center. And for the fun of it, let's go to the guardhouse and let's ask what's going on. We are preparing for the pilgrimage to Emirati, the Mountain of Light, a young guard tells you, stamping yet another merchant's application. It always turns into a bit of a festival. Everyone wants permission to go, and so they come harangue us when the sun priests turn them away. It's a religious pilgrimage? Well, a bit, she makes a face. 
Never emerges the city, so becomes very devoted to Maker when the pilgrimage season comes any anyway. When you complete your certain stories in the city of pilgrimage will open, bringing new opportunities. We get another memory distant shores, another fragment. It is now evening. We will now go to the inn. Uh, we'll try the kitchens this time. We failed the challenge. The inn's cook is a large, scaly man with arms like a stevedore. who turns you, away, turns out, turns you out without a word. Are all cooks as fearsome? What well, you wouldn't give for a crease-faced, kindly old lady with sweet tarts in her pockets. So we failed. That's a pity. And we will use the uh, mirror charm this time. It seems to work. At least you do not remember any particularly vivid dreams. When you awake, you retrieve the mirror charm before... Uh, when you wake. When you retrieve the mirror charm before you wake. Is it your imagination? Just some of the script scribble on the paper seems slightly blurred. You've uh, lost five terror and our time is over. And we're done. It is unlikely. Oops. It is unlikely we are going to come back to Varches. Oh, there are no shops here. I thought there were. Oopsie. That's all right. We're gonna sail north then, and keep the light off because we're a little lower on fuel than I would like to be, this far from home. Anyway, that was Varches. The only thing really left to do is get my hearts up enough that I can pass that test. Or get one of the two doctors, uh, get them to like me a bit more, and uh, bring them there to pass the test for me. That being said, um, we're unlikely to do so. I have very little reason to return to Varchis this particular run. All right, how are we doing? We haven't reached a new tile yet. That's uh, disheartening. It's a lot of open sea. I'm actually kind of impressed. It's a little disorienting though to not have any landmarks around. huh? We're hoping to find the Isle of Cats. Which may turn out to be more difficult than I thought. Uh, we could go to the East Coast, but I really don't want to. I just remembered we need to stop by Mount Palmerston on the way back as well. Bring out the nets. Let's catch it. We got a strange catch and new terror. Awesome. Strange catches actually are useful for certain things. Uh, you can throw them into the water to uh, make submerged enemies surface, like the uh, auroral mega crabs will uh, sink below the water sometimes, which is annoying. Isle of Cats is some distance in the north. Awesome. We'll want to head that way. If for no other reason, then they have a port there, which we do want to uh, want to visit. So let's go ahead and weep. Our terror is getting a little high. I might want to split my journey into parts at this point because uh, it's going to get dangerous. So where do I really want to go? I don't need to visit Visage again. I don't need to visit Nuncio or Polythreme. Mount Palmerston I need to visit, but at the moment it's not a big deal. So we could drop by Khan's Shadow, go to Khan's Heart, up to Gator's Morn, and go from Gator's Morn, we could go home. Seems like a waste, but it might be prudent. I don't want to get more than 75 terror, and uh, we've only got 15 left to go, which means I'm going to have to burn the lamp the entire run. Gee, I wonder who that could be. And we just gained five more terror. Wonderful. File a port report. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to read that. We're not going to sell our sunlight here. A paretical uh, scatter of yellow lit honey dens and brightly painted ale houses to the southeast rises the stone tower of Cavendish Abbey, its rampart song with crimson and gold banners. There are sailors from all across the Neath hauling cargo, dicing, brawling, and good naturedly on the docks. The air carries the sound of Z chanty slung with more enthusiasm than skill, the smell of roses edged with brimstone. Look at the Isle of Cats, the wide eyed dockmaster says brightly. Would you like to bribe me not to write you down the details in the ninth official ledger? So, uh, five echoes. We gain one suspicion. And uh, hand over the coins. She tips you a sharp smile before we view the nearest ale house. They are processed straight for early corrupt and pleasingly efficient. The ale house assigned a tiger painted the color of rose petals. Someone has gone to great trouble and expense to gild the creature's eyes who look over the port, feral and unseen. A caged hive of lamplighter bees hangs from the ceiling like a chandelier. A few zailers give you a hard mouth assessing looks, but most ignore your presence entirely. Okay. The caddies all wear pink, a pair of amber stones threaded around their necks or pinned to their collars. Cat's eyes, one says, for the Pirate King. As far as you could gather, the Pirate King's name is Leopold. He controls all the trade in the island. Half the caddies believe he could take the form of a crimson tiger and creep into their dreams. The other, ha other half suspect more probably, prosaically, he simply eats those who displease him. You turn your head as though you were admiring one of the moldering draperies hang hung on the wall. A vial flourishes in the buyer's trembling hands. He uncorks it, pours a few drops of thick red liquid down his throat. The vial drops to the floor. When you look back up, he is gone. You blink and look around. Nobody else seems to be the least perturbed that the man disappeared from their midst. You pick up the fallen vial and examine the traces left inside. Sticky honey gleaming with redness entirely unlike blood. A mellifera's sister, of course, she responds, performing a complicated negotiation between ve between veil, thick glove, and glass of mushroom wine. You ask what one of, those, one of those is, and she snorts. I'm glaring at you underneath this bloomin' veil. You get appropriately cowed, and the mellifera's sister thaws a little. We are beekeepers and honey harvesters. The caddies owe their prosperity to us, and the pirate king, too. She slurps the last of the mushroom wine behind her veil, and the barkeep glides over to refill her glass, eyes respectively downcast. Must be more of the idle cat than the drunken slots and Z stories. Make sure you learned all you wish before you leave the place. And we have. The barkeep stops you before you reach the door and hands you a brooch set with two amber stones. He waits impassively until you pinch your clothes. Everybody wears the cat's eyes here, as he tells you, moving aside as you let you pass. Just a really friendly reminder the pirate king is watching. Seems that no place, then, is truly lawless. We can now go to one of two places. I'm going to go to the Cavendish Abbey. Crimson-clad mellifera sisters patrol its ramparts and tend their hives of lamplighter bees. The Mellifera's sisters make their home on the richly appointed stone tower of Cavendish Abbey. Their thick gloves and crimson mesh helmets are worn, less for modesty and more for practicality. They tend the hives of the lamblighter bees all across the aisle. They make religious observ observance of harvesting red honey for the pirate king. Your actions attract will attract the pirate king's notice. You need five notice to gain an offer from a patron. So, if we had five notice, we could do this. We could gossip with a novice, you need a lamentable relic. Uh, fuel for the bee smokers, uh, five fuel, you can get points, I'm not going to do that. Or if you have new, recent news, which we do not, you can do that. But this will probably be the one I work with. Perhaps not. By the way, you can buy fuel here. It's standard cost, speaking of which. Um, but other than that, I, I, I wouldn't really recommend using fuel. If you're going to visit this place often enough, you know, buy fuel cheap in either Mount Palmerston or the Iron Republic and do it that way. Or just visit five times with recent news and you'll be fine. Either way, we're going to call that a part here. Um, I am going to go do the standard run through Khan's Heart and then I'll head up to Gators Morn. I will probably meet you in Gators Morn, assuming I don't sink. And then uh, from Gators Morn, I will consider whether or not I can make it to Mount Palmerston. Uh, more than likely, though, I'm just going to go straight back to Fallen London with our job complete. And we will do something about uh, the Zoop uh, a little bit later. Uh, the other place I need to go, I need to go to Khan's Heart and look for a particular event. If we get it, I will uh, show it off. Uh, but either way, we will not be meeting again at the Isle of Cats. So until our paths cross again, 
have fun and stay safe, everyone.